Hello, everybody. Uh, this is not the usual intro to the Planet FPL podcast because me and Clayton have just finished recording the Game Week 31 review. And yes, you're hearing this at the start because we just finished recording. And then no sooner had the Premier League and the two respective clubs just announced that Chelsea versus Tottenham is going into the Thursday night in Game Week 35, not Game Week 36. So I thought we should just cover that off very briefly. That'll obviously now give Tottenham a double game week of Arsenal at home and Chelsea away, which isn't the greatest on paper. And then Chelsea will have Aston Villa away and Tottenham at home. So the popular Cole Palmer, who we're going to speak about a lot on this podcast, I think there's another week of captaincy for him there considering that double. 36 would have been better for him. I think it's fair to say West Ham at home rather than Villa away. So we now know it's going to go into 35. I think what's really important here is now for those who are going to transition from 34 to 35, considering Chelsea play Arsenal away and Tottenham blank, that's bad. Mm. Um, and if I wasn't wildcarding in 35 for any reason, I definitely am now. <laughs> so do you, I mean, instinct to that, because you're, you're, you've are you used your wildcard. I've used my wildcard, yeah. I've just got bench boost left. What does that what does that mean for you, that fixture going into 35? Is is that bad for you now or I, I, yeah, I think so. I um I need to have a look at Pete's site, FPL.team. But my initial instinct is that I don't think it will change too much in terms of planning because I was leaning towards bench boost 37 anyway, right? So I don't think it will change too much. Um is it ideal? No, but yeah, bench boost 37 was where I was heading anyway, to be honest. So I think for me, it probably doesn't change too much. The other thing to consider of that, of the consequences, and we don't know at this stage, but I don't think it guarantees that Brighton Chelsea goes into 37. Ah, it, pro it probably okay. still does, but it doesn't guarantee it. Now, if it goes into 36, that's a disaster for the 37 bench boost yeah. because you, you'll certainly want Chelsea double, double, free, and then. 37. Now, the single fixture would be Forest away. For Brighton, it would be Newcastle away. Not so mm -hmm. clever. But that would make the transition towards... I mean, if you only have four teams doubled in 37, you're you're obviously not going to have a full complement of players that would double anyway. So you're going to have Chelsea singlers. Will your projections change Forest. much based on this announcement? No, I think it probably would still be 37. Um, but... I wouldn't be shot, therefore. Brighton Chelsea is not going to get picked up for TV. It's not impossible that it was 36. There's no logical reason for it to go into 36. I think it's just important to make people aware that that is a a small possibility. I mean, to be fair, that, that possibility also exists for United versus Newcastle. But United v Newcastle is highly likely to still be shown for TV. I imagine Brighton Chelsea will still go into 37. Yeah. But it's something to be aware of. Quite why they've now waited this long to then now announce 35 i'm not sure but it's the premier league the game will be shown live on sky as we always thought that it would be i don't know it, it might be that something's affected it like potentially sky might want not in a forest versus chelsea on like the friday night in match week 37 so it okay. could be something like that they've gone right get it forward into into match week 35 then for example so yeah i'm gonna just need to sit down with a planner again and see because then uh, if it looks horrible there's a chance i might look at bringing the bench boost forward to 34 uh, possibly uh it's probably those who were looking at 36 will obviously look less attractive we suggested that as an alternative because yeah. you're not you, you're certainly not going to want to you're going to even though it's a tough double for tottenham you're going to want some tottenham players but then you don't want to bench boost for tottenham players away to liverpool in 36 no so yeah, that's a, a an interesting spin. I just wanted to record this bit at the start because we'd literally just finished. I was like, Clayton, get back on the Zoom studio. Let's cover it off. So to confirm, Tottenham will double against Arsenal and Chelsea in 35 and Chelsea will double with Aston Villa and Tottenham. Chelsea's fixtures afterwards are good. We know Tottenham will highly likely obviously double again, of course, against uh, Burnley and Manchester City in 37. Chelsea's extra fixture with Chelsea probably still goes into 37. There may be a small possibility that it goes into 36. Instead, I didn't want to do the podcast and not get that covered. So yeah, makes sense. That's it. 35 is the confirmed double game week for Chelsea and Tottenham. Enjoy the podcast, everyone.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name is Clayton. And my name is James. And James, it's only right in a week with all the big hitters getting rotated. So just taking a rest. I'm off the bench. <laughs> what, the... <laughs> what the hell happened this week? I don't know if anyone's calling him a big hitter. What <laughs> happened this week? Well, in summary, it's uh, a midweek at the end of the season. And we should note this for double game weeks and stuff. But uh, I think particularly for sides like yourselves and City, you've obviously got Champions League next Tuesday and stuff. Yeah, it was always a bit of a concern for me in terms of looking at wildcard 31 and had 35 not kind of landed the way it would, I would have been wildcard in this week and would probably have ended up being as equally a shit for me as it was, actually. How was your game week? Yeah, it was carnage, wasn't it? Uh, my game week was very much saved by Palmer and Garnacho last night, and we'll talk about that madness, but... Uh... 62 points all out. Uh, it's another red arrow for me. So I'm down to 23k now. So it's not not outrageous at all. But uh, on the back of eight green arrows in a row, uh, I've now got four out of five red arrows. So um, yeah, down from 12k to 23k in the last few weeks. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm still happy with it. Lots of lots of time left. But um, yeah, wild card has not gone great. <laughs> a wild of course, card you did it get... before 30, didn't you? I did it, in and game you 30. kind of impulsively was like, yeah. I'm going to do it like the day before. I think the words I used was, I'm doing it now to attack the season and I've attacked myself by going <laughs> backwards. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's not not been brilliant, but yeah, 62 points all out around 23k. How'd you get on? Uh, 59 minus four for me, um, which takes some doing. I've dropped to about 223k. It takes some doing because it, it really is some achievement in FPL. And I realise I won't be the only one who's got this this week to have two players score a hat trick and hit a red arrow. Oh, um, wow. That's where I, I, I do own unlocked. Palmer and Phil Foden. But the rest is just a shambles. Gabriel's clean sheet is almost irrelevant because there's so much Arsenal ownership out there. Captain Salah, which I suppose is a, a victory versus the Holland and Saka crowd. And there were some very unfortunate souls who captained Haaland and vice-captain Saka. It probably didn't impact too much. Obviously lost Haaland from the 11. Bailey, one-pointer off the bench for me. Muniz, Tony, Son, Porro, Dubravka, obviously. Nothing. Malo Gusto, brilliant. Zero-pointer. But it's all right. He's still got good fixtures to go. That's what I keep telling myself. Likewise. So, uh, Foden <laughs> Palmer... Uh, Averted that from being an absolute crisis. Um, well, for me, Foden especially, obviously, has averted that from an absolute crisis this week. And yeah, I look at the weekend. I think, mean, yeah, it's probably a role for me with with what I've got going into this week. I'm looking at goalkeeper transfer possibly, but I think I've come to the conclusion not to bother. So Dubravka and Ariola, anyone on that combination is like, ah, oh, enough of this now. Obviously, especially with Ariola injured, because I probably would have rather played Ariola for the next two. Yeah, rather than Dubravka, yeah. Fulham's home form is excellent. Newcastle's away form shite. Tottenham nearly always score. That's Newcastle's fixture in thirty three. I think mean, there's nothing there for Dubravka. But when I look at goalkeepers for like a two week, because obviously I'll free hit thirty four and, and wild card thirty five. Like, is anything worth it over pe- potentially having two one week outfield punts in game week thirty three? And I'm Nothing I'm not sure. I, I come to the conclusion if I was to buy anyone, the one I'd probably want is is your goalkeeper, Clay. It's his Raya. Yeah, I've got him. You look at the two fixtures, Brighton away and Villa at home, it doesn't inspire much um, in terms of defensive potential because of the opponents, but I also think you're the strongest defence in the league. Yeah. Okay, maybe go that. But if I go that route, it blocks me off of going Bailey to Bumo in 33. Okay. If that's the way that I want to go, that's yeah, just find it. another option. I, I don't think that's worth it. It's not worth it when there's so much randomness of goalkeeper returns. I, I think I'm just going to take the Bravka's one point this weekend and and move on. Team's pretty well set this week. I guess from my perspective, the player that I was worried about going into this week and not only was Saka. Uh, me too. Um, who's who's obviously not played and yet I still ended up with a, a red arrow somehow. So... Yeah, uh, not in a bad position going into this week. The goalkeeper is the only one I'm looking at with kind of real annoyance, but I think I'm going to end up rolling. There's obviously a real debate to be had about captaincy. Um, my intention had been Palmer prior to last night, and I don't suppose I'm particularly put off by that. Okay. But Do you own Son? Yeah, I'd definitely yeah. be Palmer over Son this week. That uh, always okay. would have been the, the case for me anyway, because I think space would be difficult for him at the weekend. Forest underlying... Um, 
XGC under Nuno is pretty good, actually. I think they're about fifth or sixth okay. since the period he took yeah. over in terms of expected goals conceded. The tempt, of course, is Holland. we know plays now. Yeah. We assume because of the break on Wednesday night, whereas I was possibly concerned that this Saturday would be the one that he'd get left out. The other thing for me is I, I wonder if it's ridiculous. I mean, I, I saw a stat on uh, Fancy Football Scout, 1.6 million um, people had sold Phil Foden like over the last three game weeks. I think I was one of them on Wildcard. Yeah, and it, it's understandable if people did go down that route. You know, Liverpool, blank, Arsenal, like I get it. Um, I wonder if he might not start this weekend. But also looking at me, my bench this week in terms of outfield players, Bailey, Doughty, Pau Torres. I mean, if I had a decent keeper, you'd arguably go bench boost that. Yeah. <laughs> Considering the carnage of midweek fixtures anyway, I obviously don't have it. It is the early kickoff, so I suppose I'll get a tip off if Foden doesn't start. So my point is I probably wouldn't go rushing to, to buy him because of his hat yeah. trick this week. It could be break for him, having obviously played. He only just made it past an hour against you, though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't electric in that game yeah um he was on on wednesday night although the return should be noted come from a combined distance of roughly about 65 yards um there weren't exactly tappings in that yeah trick. rocket whereas uh for palmer there's there's two penalties and a deflected goal but i mean palmer it's astonishing what he's done yeah he's near he's, he's closing in on high scoring player in the game he's closing in on the golden boot and he give everyone else a six game start. Yeah, I know. And, and he's playing and in a team that's been shit all season, literally. Largely. And I think that's the thing. It's like even though he got the hat trick last night, it's even his. I think I read a stat he created like eight chances as well. And I know there were chances galore last night, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, I think it's his all round game that's quite impressive. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's in contender. I, I know people are saying he's assuring for young player. He's a contender for just player of the year. Yeah, he probably will be. I actually. think. Yeah. Um. So, look, quite content going into this week. I want to take a couple of one-week punts. Kind of Brentford's the one on my eye, particularly for game week 33. Obviously, when we go through the games, we'll, we'll look at options for people going into towards bench boost 34. And obviously, those are looking later towards the, the 37 week. I think we should just get on with the games, to be honest, Clates, because there's a lot sure. to cover off. And I'm yeah, obviously there's... aware that deadline from time recording is kind of circa 26 hours away. Absolutely. Action galore. Uh, but it started with a one-all draw. Newcastle, Everton, one-all. Yeah, disappointing result for Newcastle. Everton still winless since December, but obviously I think a drawing at St. James's Park is probably a result that they take under that circumstance. No doubt about the penalty um, given away by Paul Dummer, who Simon Bibby described on Clash of Correspondence yesterday as a PE teacher disguised as a footballer. Somewhat harsh, but a good cast. Um, but does kind of describe Newcastle's defensive problems, which are obviously ongoing, Livermento, we think, not back till May. We're aware of, obviously, Lascelles and Botman, long-term injuries. Kieran Trippier is not going to play this weekend. It'll be extremely doubtful for game week 33 against Tottenham as well. Um, the away record is is bad. We covered that quite a lot on COTC yesterday as well. And I know those have been wild card and are kind of looking at, oh, best defensive Newcastle asset. It probably just falls into Dan Byrne by default. I think with Lewis Hall, 4.2's obviously played a couple now at left back, but Livermento's not out for the season and Trippier's not out for the season. So the bit that we, you want it most, it might be gone by it's that too point. too risky, yeah. So I think Dan Burns obviously going to play at centre-back now. So that would probably be the one. It doesn't feel much point in terms of spending the extra for share as it stands. I mean, Burn actually had a goal disallowed in this one, wasn't it? Narrow it, offside yeah. against Isak. And Isak's the one... It's obviously getting the most attention. I think he's gone up 0 0.3 or so. I think a few people went for him on wildcard. Yeah, definitely. I know Suj, Suj got him in uh, either this week or or the week before as well. He's actually now got um, the best goals per 90 in the league. Wow. Alexander okay. Isak this season. Again, he's closing in on the golden boat. I, think he's, I want to say he's only started 19 games. Wow. I, I don't know the actual stat on appearances, but I'll take your word for it. So, yeah, I mean, his expected goals per 90 is now better than Haaland to give you some sort of context. So, I mean, even with their bad away record, that still appeals this week if people want to go and buy against a, a Fulham side that's kind of looked wide open the last couple of games, although admittedly in away games and their home form has been outstanding. On a different day, he'd got more Isak. So he's obviously had that goal for Burn 
disallowed for the offside. Um, he also had one cleared off the line that Harvey Barnes created for him. He probably should have scored. And he kind yeah. of shanked the rebound effort as well. The goal he did score, he took really well. So owners who have already been on are probably a bit disappointed with sort of the eight points this week. Formed really well. Um, Elliot Anderson might be one to keep an eye on. Um, for those who kind of want a 3-4-3, three, three, perhaps for the rest of the season, looking at a bench boost at the end, there's an element of risk in there, but he's a really good talent. He's really cheap. He might be one you could stick in as eight for attacker. But I think for many, you probably don't need to go that low. No, there's so many options, price. isn't there? For those like me, world card in 35, you are going to want three of them, I think. But yeah. At the moment. It's which three, though? That's the... Is- is- Isak would be a shoe in. Yep. And then... Gordon, I think you'd want. I think probably Gordon over Barnes. Gordon obviously is back from suspension this week. And then Byrne. But Cy was speaking on COTC yesterday saying going Barnes instead of Byrne. Just like, forget that. Defense. Oh, just go. Yeah, yeah. forget the defence. You can't argue. Especially you look at it statistically. It's not great, is it? The problem I said to him, though, was I said that of the teams doubling in 37, if you're heading, heading in that direction, you don't want to end up on like double ups of any of them. It's just like, I'll have one of them, one of them, one of them, and just keep my fingers crossed and pray. I said, well, that's so similar. You go free Newcastle, you've left yourself, what, five attacking spots for yeah, the other to, four to teams. And, and you still want bits of that, obviously. <clears throat> Particularly if, obviously, the Chelsea Tottenham game was to go into 36 as well. You start going like Palmer, Sun, another Tottenham. Yeah. So, yeah, awkward for them at the moment. I think if you were buying new this week, Isak's the only one you'd, you'd really be looking at. Yeah. For Everton, massive game this weekend against Burnley, which, I mean, if they lose, and we think the ruling on the points deduction might come next week as well, there's a scenario here where they're seven points clear of Burnley, get beat at the weekend, they might find themselves level in seven days' time. Yeah, If Everton get four-point deduction and Burnley win this weekend, that's what, yeah. we can't rule Burnley out of it yet at this stage because of exactly that. You could have a scenario where Everton, Luton and Burnley were on 22 points. Um, the Sheffield United and Burnley play each other in 34 as well. I think with Everton, you're largely not looking offensively at the moment. I think for those heading towards 34, those with a goalkeeper problem might decide right now Jordan Pickford as well, a solution. Defence, would you have any suggestions there I'm considering getting an Everton defender for 34 it's just brand fight isn't it I think yeah. from the outfield players you'd make a case if you've got the luxury financially you could go for Mikalenko there's, there's possibly a little bit more output on that offensively um, he only missed the game at Bournemouth because of illness <clears throat> so it's okay. not like a, oh he was rested he's certainly part of Everton's first choice 11 wouldn't bother with Ben Godfrey uh, Tarkovsky or Brantfrey will chip in with the odd little bits from set play, sure. Brantfrey's cheap enough that you're not going to go Tarkovsky, I don't think, if you're planning towards yeah. 34. Three hitters will probably ignore as well because one of the fixtures is Liverpool. So yeah. I think for me, if I was to go in Everton playing with 34, Pickford would be the most likely for me. Okay. I still think the Liverpool game, <clears throat> you've obviously got the, the save point potential out of that, plus the Forest game. So Pickford, Brantfrey, a few might look at Mikalenko. I've heard a little bit of talk of Dwight McNeil. as a bit of a differential of people heading that way. I'm pretty sure Everton fans would say, don't bother. I was just going to say, did not like that at all. No. Um, goal for Calvert-Lewin. Finally. After yeah. about 18 games or something. A long time. Although Dubravka should have saved it, which just sums up, sums up the goal. He's literally got a whole palm of the hand. Yeah, in the context of that ball. game, though, like 88th minute, that's a big point for Everton. Looking at their their run, they've not won since Burnley in the league. That's what I said. They need, they, need an, they need another point deduction, yeah, right? To, to a... give, give them a, a kick up the rear. Because look, if they didn't get it, they'd probably go, well, you know, we've got more than a game spare, better fixtures than the others down there as well. Feels comfy, isn't it? As long as you just keep ticking along. Any other year on the points <laughs> they're on with the deduction they've had, you'd be panicking for them yeah uh, I think most of us just still think they'll get out of it and I know Evertonians are like we're doomed we're doomed I mean should they get slapped with like an eight point deduction or something then yeah I'll yeah then we seriously, seriously worry for them I think even if they got four they'd be all right I you think mean... they get more I think they'll get more points than Luton for the rest of the season if they lost on Saturday though that would maybe change that opinion yeah a little that's bit. a huge huge game but uh, yeah keeping with it at the foot of the table so moving it on Nottingham Forest 3 Fulham 1 big three points for Forest here 
Yeah, very much so. Again, it was their first win since about December. And it's, it's interesting how quickly the narrative switches because they've gone from sort of three months without a win. So it's like, oh, it's three games unbeaten. <laughs> yeah. And quickly switch the narrative. I think with the fixtures they've had over those three games, though, they needed to be picking up a win somewhere. When Mark Southern's come on COTC during the break, I said, if you haven't won between like the international break, the Palace Fulham games, and then at my place in 32 at Tottenham, then I'm worried for you. They've got that big win. And that's really important. They've given themselves that, that little buffer over Luton now. We know they're going to appeal the deduction as well. So most insiders seem to think that that deduction can't get worse for them. It was big for them because the fixtures now begin to switch where Lutons do look better than Forest. So they need to give themselves an advantage going into that. They played really well. It's got some beautiful goals. Um, your boy Gibbs White looks outstanding on on the bits of the game that I've seen. I know. I um, I don't own him anymore. I held him for like 80% of the season and then again got rid a few weeks ago, sadly. But yeah, my boy, he's, he's thriving, Gibbs White. I think most who've got Forrest at this stage, if they kind of went through 29, is probably the most common scenario. Gibbs White, Alanga, the fixture this weekend, despite the fact we always give up chances, probably gives you an excuse to sell. Other than obviously Chris Wood is in really good form at the moment. And if that's your enabling forward, I, I don't suppose you're going to move that on now to a, a Muniz or the only one would maybe, if you're heading towards 34, perhaps you look at Mateta because of the double instead. But even still... You'd probably rather just leave that till 34 itself rather than yeah, there's probably make better the move moves now. to do elsewhere, right? So, but really good result for Forrest. I think um, there's a little note to say on the team lineup was better. Um, Divock Origi had been having this run in the team when I spoke to Surge on Sunday night. It was like, why is Alanga not playing? We don't really understand this. Him, Gibbs White, and Hudson Odoi behind Wood looks so much it's better. Brilliant, yeah. Also, I know Forest fans have been saying Yates and Sangare are quite similar. Having um, a player in the middle of the pitch like Danilo um, has got more variety in his play. You look at the link up between Danilo and Gibbs White for the third goal. You've just got more powerful runner, someone who can join in in the attacking phases. That's better, but I don't know if they'll do that at Tottenham. I'd look at, I'd look if that was the lineup at Tottenham. I'd think, oh, that's quite open. You'll definitely cause me some problems on the way back going the other way. But what's the likes of Elanga or Hudson Odoi going to do with my fullbacks, which with I always backs. speak about? Yeah. It makes me wonder if like Origi might come back in. He might even play someone like Dominguez in the wide area. But I do think Forrest can probably look at Tottenham away as the bonus. Wolves and Everton are the two more important games. Yeah. Afterwards. <clears throat> so if I said to a Forest fan now, you'll take four across the next three possibly take that as long as the four was probably don't lose to Everton across yeah. those three. For Fulham, do you think that we, we were talking about potential European push? Do you think that's still on? Obviously, they've dropped points now against Sheffield United and Forest back to back. Well, like, ironically, as, as discussed on COTC yesterday, if Fulham had won these two games at Sheffield United and Forest, they'd be level with Newcastle. Yeah. They'd yeah, have been like, right in it. Quickly, yeah. Um, Probably not. No, it's probably too much of an arse now. And, and they're away form as well. Also, you know, one win since the opening day of the season away from home. Their away form is relegation form across yeah. the season. But their home form, he's like sixth, seventh best. So, and they've still got some big home games to come, starting with Newcastle, Liverpool, City, Crystal Palace also still go there as well. Marcus Silva was obviously not happy. Um, the very rarely cited triple 33rd minute substitution with Sasa Lukic, Harry Wilson and Alex Iwobi all hooked off. That suggests there'll probably be a few changes to that Fulham lineup at the weekend. I suggest William will be one of them. Yeah, Harrison Reed maybe for Lukic, another one. I found, you'll know I'm a big fan of Paulinho. Mm -hmm. I found his role in a, a, a couple of Forest Good moments a little bit alarming. What alarmed you about it? Well just slower than what I expect Jao Paulinia to be in terms okay. of is your head really there, mate? I don't know. Is that the vibe you got, yeah? Well, I just, people running off him. Okay. And he's so good um, as a kind of defensive destroyer in there. Just looked. There was a couple of times I had to look back. I actually paused a little bit to the highlights. He's that Paulinia. Yeah. Oh, wow. Paulinia, that's a, a little bit concerning. Um, the main one for Fulham at the moment is, is Muniz, obviously, who blanked. Finally, but Terrible. still had five shots in the box. It's on a, and actually, to be fair to Fulham, 
they had a number of decent efforts second half, but obviously give themselves too much to do. There's no chance of me benching Munez against that Newcastle defence or Martin Dubravka at the weekend. Yeah. yeah, I'll have the contradiction of those two and just accept my shit points for Dubravka. I would fancy Munez to return yeah, so against nice Newcastle to at the weekend. And I'd probably fancy Fulham to win it. They'll get a response. Marco Silva's a good manager. Yeah, They'll get a response in that fixture. The team might change up a little bit, but I don't think Munez will be one of those who does. Because again, even though they were chasing this... Munez stayed on the whole game. Yeah. It's not used Jimenez. Or did he use him really late? Maybe Jimenez. But it wasn't like he, he brought Jimenez on with Munez right near no, the start when Jimenez he made some changes. No, I think Munez is, is clear. And obviously, Boris just it's just not getting a look in at the moment. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Moving it on. Bournemouth won Crystal Palace nil. And Bournemouth, after they exited the FA Cups, four wins and five now. Decent little run. <laughs> Bournemouth have essentially turned up for two spells this season. <laughs> yeah. I think they're... <laughs> They're 13 points from five now, Bournemouth. And wasn't it 19 points from 21 when they had that run like that sort of around season. December as well? And if you take them two runs out, they're going down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you but can't, if, you can't do But that. if you just give them them two runs, they're qualifying <laughs> they're for the, the Champions League. league. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, yeah, they're on a, a good spell of run, a good, a good spell of results, I should say, sorry. And they themselves, because of that, may well think, "Oh, can we push for Europe?" Um, if we, yeah, if you, I you're asking you about the... Fulham, yeah, I've got to ask you about Bournemouth. Of yeah, well, of course you have. Bournemouth for what? Forty-one points now. Four, they're two ahead of Fulham. Yeah. And um, what point. are United on? Forty-eight. United on forty-eight. Yeah. And they play. They, Bournemouth play United in two weeks. It's not inconceivable yeah. that Bournemouth win the next two and May United lose the next two and only be one oh, point between them. Crazy this season. Like the ta- I, I tweeted this this morning. The tables just different groups of like title challenges, Champions League, Europa. Yeah. That said, I I look at them still having to, I, I think for Bournemouth because of where they are, I think to hit Europe, they've got to maintain this, they've, they've got to hit it hard with the run. Yeah. And I look at them still having to go to, to Villa, Arsenal and Chelsea and still play the likes of United and Brighton at home. And I think like to have a real it's consistent a bag, run it? where you're hitting sort of two points per game over this period, they'll, they'll probably need close to that. I don't see that, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they win at Luton this weekend. As Luton is just obviously so damaged in terms of injuries and stuff at the moment. Plenty obviously be looking at Solanke on their path towards game week 34. Um, but I'm not sure what else I'd be looking at for Bournemouth. And we got rotation mm-hmm. in this midweek. And we should learn from that, right? They They rotated quite a bit when they played Luton in game week 28 in the midweek. They've rotated quite a bit for this one. You've got the double coming up in 34. There's going to be some bits of rotation. Your safety nets are your people. Like Neto should be okay. Someone like Zabani is definitely okay. Dominic Solanke, as long as he's fit, is okay. If you're looking for the kind of wild, you know, Clive takes his goal really well, but to, to guarantee you two starts and stuff, nah. Nah. It doesn't exist. Lewis Cook played centre back in this one. We do think Senesai, for those who still hold, might be back for Luton. I, I don't know if we get an update for Andoni Iriola later today. We think he might be back. Other than that, none of them midfielders can be gambled on. I wouldn't gamble on any of them full backs. If you've got Kirkes, every chance he plays at Luton this week, whether they'll be impacted to pick um, a team that's based more on height, they might do. So Lloyd Kelly might play again. At left back, if you're hoping for him to play, don't know the answer to that because um, he's it, probably about recovery and stuff in terms of the team he picks. Palace, the big kind of news out of this really is the injury to Chris Richards, yeah, which we assume is going to rule him out a game week 34. I've seen people who wild carded and were like, "Yep, straight into Livermento. Oh crap, he's injured. Straight into Richards. Oh crap, yeah, he's injured." I've seen that. Um. And now you're like, where do I go now on this path to game week 34? Well, the other devices don't go for Bournemouth um, because you're not going to get anything at that value. And it's probably not worth going towards, actually. So um, I know you caught the start of this. You want to cover what they did instead? With, with yeah, Madison. so obviously we were looking at the lineup. I assumed it was a 4 3 3. I think I looked in Palace's Slack channel. Rory, the Palace correspondent, said, yeah, it looks like a 4 3 3. And then was uh, it wasn't it was back five Jefferson Lerma left centre back Anderson central centre back and um, it looked good in and out of possession to be fair I know they lost the game but again I only caught 15 20 minutes of it just to see the shape but yeah that's essentially how they lined up 
uh, back five, not a midfield three. And Lerma looked brilliant from what I saw of him there, to be fair. It's not alien for him to play that position. He played it quite a bit for Bournemouth in the past um, as well, in a back four primarily. So back three should be easier. And one thing, obviously, about putting a midfielder in that position is your distribution should be quite yeah. good. He's a handy footballer. Um, and he's also very, he's a good physical presence, Jefferson Lerma. He's, he's a dislikable player. He's a, he's a bit of a hatchet, man. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure you'll cover that role fine. So I think what that tells us about Palace is the back three sticks. Yeah, agree. There was no temp temptation here just to go to a back four. The only caveat with that is they might have made a choice that they didn't want Joe Ward as one or two in a back okay. four. But I think in terms of heading towards this path towards game week 34, which is the most important thing for the fantasy managers, yeah, back three sticks here, I think. With Richards now off the table, certainly the three hitters are going to look at Munoz even more now. Mm. And what I think price is he? Uh, Munoz is about four five, okay. roughly. Might be four six now, maybe. He obviously gets himself into good offensive positions. I think when you're looking at the attacking players, it's quite straightforward. Mateta, if you need the enabler, Eze is obviously a good pickup. Um, Elise, we think, will be back in the squad tomorrow. Okay. against Manchester fan. City. So hopefully ready for 34. I can see me going Munoz, Eze and Elise on free hit, sure. potentially. But because it's City-Liverpool in the next two, they're difficult to invest yeah, into. Where... Don't don't just get blinded by the double. You've, you've got to look at the other stuff that's going on there. And it's not to say like an Eze can't return in these two, but I just think you're going to find that difficult to buy before 34. I mean, if you're heading on that path... You're looking now at perhaps, say, a Wolves at similar sort of prices, mm -hmm. maybe, to get you there easier and then come for Palace last or obviously get your quota of Arsenal and Liverpool players first if you're looking towards bench boosting in 34, for example. So, yeah, eyes on the prize with them. I would guess that IU would be the one that would drop out once Elise comes back in. But as said previously, I have a little bit of concern with Mateta that that could become IU through the middle. Really? Okay. A little bit. I, I would imagine that Mateta's played often enough. And I think he started every game this year um, under Hodgson and Glasner. So you think so Edward not... would be third down the pecking Yeah, Edward's order. definitely behind okay. Mateta. He has been for a while now. Yeah, so but I mean, I, even behind IU down the middle. I, I'm just concerned that with Elise and Eze, you, you don't want to stop them being what they're really good at on the ball. And I, think I I use work rate. If you take yeah. that out, the Palace team will suffer a little bit. Yeah, I agree with that. That's all it is. Um, the Palace fans really like I because of the, the nasty, ugly stuff that he does in his game. I'd just be aware of that. That's all. Mateta wouldn't be, and we've mentioned about like Wood to Mateta, for example, or Muniz to Mateta. I certainly wouldn't be making that move now. I'd, I'd gain a little bit of information, which hopefully Michael Elise's return should give you. I think Munoz is the clear one to look at if if you want to get involved defensively because of game week 34. Uh, play. Next up, Burnley 1, Wolves 1. Yeah, missed, missed opportunity for, for Burnley, really, because mm. then they got themselves in front with a brilliant goal from from Braun Larson. They they changed the front line a bit. It looks like Lyle Foster played off the right with Larson moving to the left and then Wilson Odeberg in a more central area okay. um, with Datro Fafana coming back, who was obviously ineligible against Chelsea. They're getting a little bit more consistency in their lineup now. Bettinho moved to right back. Charlie Taylor came back in um, with Lorenz Assignon obviously suspended. I would presume Assignon would come back in, um, but not sure who would drop out, bearing in mind it's Everton next. I don't know if they would think about it from a physical perspective and maybe even leave someone like Odebert out this weekend. It really doesn't matter too much from fantasy. I don't suppose too many are looking at them. But there'd be a few because of the lack of clean sheets going around. There'd be a few that hold in the likes of Charlie Taylor. Yeah, not sure if he'd play or not. Would be my take. I don't think the fixtures are probably bad enough this week where people will feel to want to play Charlie Taylor in most circumstances. Mm, Before sure. unbeaten Everton. Burnley. Yeah, and that's on the back of four defeats in a row as well. So it's not been bad. I mean, that's. Pretty good. That includes yeah. trips to West Ham, Chelsea, drawing with Wolves is, in context, is not a disaster. They obviously beat Brentford as well. The big games this weekend, like I said, yeah. if, if they could go to Goodison and win and then Everton get the points off, suddenly they're going to go, oh my God, 
and there's still winnable games there for it's like them. a momentum shifter potentially right could be so but if they lose saturday then i think finally we'd have to say yeah writing's definitely on the wall but we should give them some credit for putting themselves back in a nice position what's more of interest is wolves um, we've obviously their own double in 34 West Ham at home Forest away in the next two is not terrible either and very importantly for Wolves if you're looking through with their assets and carrying through it's Luton at home in 35 which looks better than almost everybody else in terms of their 35 fixtures of the teams that double in 34 and Ray and Aitnori will be screaming at people now yeah um, he, he's basically played as the left-sided forward mm-hmm. Um. Wolves. I didn't see a lot of the game, but a, a Wolves guys, Bradley Parker um, and one of our patrons at all confirmed to me that, yeah, it was a back three. Semedo played right side and centre back. Hugo Bueno played left wing back. Doherty right wing back. Doherty went to left wing back later in the game when Santiago Bueno came on and Semedo pushed on a bit higher. But eight Nori played, yeah, as a left sided forward. He missed an absolute sitter at Villa. Ironically, he scored here with the type of goal we would not expect him to score, a header from a set piece, which, to be fair, I know Vincent Company does like a moan, but yes, it wasn't a free kick. And then he's had another great chance in the second half where he should have scored. And he's also put a cross in for, was it Cunha who come on and had the header? Uh, I that, think it was, that, actually. That yeah. hit the post as well. He could have hauled here massively. Is he the new Mr. X Lively? Well... If you want a defender for the next four games, I, I would struggle to give you a better choice than that yeah. right now. Okay. I can't I can't justify it with what I'm doing. Um so I don't even know which one of the defensive three I would take out this week. Porro at Ames Forest, Gusto at Sheffield United, or Gabriel. I'm just not doing that again, basically. Yeah. Um so there's no justification in me going there. And it might be there that that's the case for a lot of people. But we right. mentioned about the the Livermento to Richards wrote, well, if you've got enough money, that's where you arguably want to go. Yeah, well, someone moment. like me, I'm um obviously I mentioned I'm looking at an Everton defender, right? And I must say I'm bench boost 37, but I'm looking at Wolves in the next few instead, thinking, could I afford to go like so I'm looking at Bradley, I can get rid of him. I'm looking at Braithwaite, should I just go eight Nuri? That's something that I'm gonna consider as well. Which what should are you bench boost still left? Yeah, bench boost 37. That's the only thing. So it's Palace at home is a single fixture. Like, it's is not... that the worst? Imagine he stayed there. Yeah. You're yeah, you're good. all right with that. If that was like Everton a single game Sheffield week United player. at home that same week, to be fair. But it's it's worth remembering that with like we get obsessed with you know doublers with with bench boosts and stuff. And I think, you know, particularly like Manchester United, like you like Saganacho in a game week 34 bench boost is perfectly fine. Rather, I've got yeah. to get 15 doublers. You don't. And with eight Norrie, if you've got the right rotation, because I've got City away and Liverpool away, respectively, in 36, 38, it's massively off-putting for the end. But if you mm. don't need it in those two weeks and you're going West Ham at home, Forest, double, where it's Bournemouth at home, you just use the Arsenal game as a bonus. Luton at home, Palace at home. Like, it's a great run. And there's every chance you, you might look at something like um, Tottenham as an example at the end where... There's possible double 36, admittedly possibly double 37, but then Sheffield United away 38 that would cover it. Yeah. Might be similar with with a Chelsea player and even a, a Brentford player, maybe. I'm already you, tripled up on Chelsea. If you looked at yeah. something like that with Brentford and you went, oh, I'm, how am I going to get rid of this? I can't get to doublers who have got doubles. If you've got Brentford at home to Fulham 36, Newcastle at home 38, might cover you well. The only thing is you'd want to play that Brentford play against Sheffield United in game week 33 rather than eight Norrie away to Forest. But then yeah. uh, the Brent the Brentford player's got Villa away this weekend, so you don't want to look at that. So people might have Reggie on. If you put something like eight Norrie in with it, it might carry you yeah. quite nicely. Better than it looks rather than, oh, I need a Newcastle defender. Yeah, but are they defending? No. no. <laughs> so, yeah, eight Norrie's going to work for a few people. And those... Obviously, heading towards 34 and, and the double, I'm definitely going to want to look at him. Yeah. Definitely. Cunha, I wouldn't steam oh, into. I I bought him on wildcard. I know you did, mate. Um, And it's fine. I wouldn't go moving it. Yeah. There's no guarantee he'll start this weekend. If he does, I don't think you're looking at 90 minutes based on what Gary O'Neill said about him. He basically said sort of 15, 20 minutes was the most he could do. Okay. So don't think you're looking at 90 at the weekend. I think you're looking at 
60 to 70 as your best case scenario. But then towards the double, you'll be fine. He'll, yeah, he'll be hopefully. he'll be back in and he'll play. I can't really give you any reason to look at anything else Wolves at this stage, I don't I, think. I feel like there's one, Ignorian, couldn't you? one question I need to ask, otherwise our, our boys in Slack will get onto us. We mentioned Wolves, uh, we mentioned Bournemouth from Fulham about Europe. Wolves are above both of them. Can they be looking at it? Well, with, if they're consistent in the fixtures that they've got, you look at West Ham at home, Bournemouth at home, Lewin at home, Crystal Palace at home. If they won those four, what does that put them on for points? Oh, oh mate, they'll be well in there. What, what would it put them on? What was that? They're four on games. 42. So that put them on 54. 54, yeah. Oof. They'll need more. And they've still got to go to Forest, City, Liverpool, and obviously play Arsenal at home as well. Yeah, I think they probably need to win all those four home games, which they could do. Um, but they probably need to if they can do well over this little period, and then obviously get Quang back for the run in as well. That'll help. It's beginning to look to TBC if he's going to be back for thirty four or not. It yeah. might be one just on the week. You can go, yep, that's going to be the one for me. It might be one that suddenly drops for three hitters. It's probably looking doubtful in terms of whether you're going to get good enough minutes from him across that double at the moment. So. Don't suppose anyone's still holding him, but people might have had going back to him in their plans. Fair play. Moving it on, the Planet FPL derby. West Ham won, Tottenham won. Have you spoken to Suj post-match? No, I messaged him on Wednesday night and said, sort your Sky team out, it's carnage with, with the team lineups. That's about all I said to him. Um, weather was good. Yeah. Nice and sunny down. in England. Yeah. Uh, pissed down all night, didn't it? It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, usual binoculars spot. I couldn't see the ball go in when Johnson scored. Just hmm. I just knew it was in because I could see the way the players were reacting and stuff. I had no idea how it had gone in. Um, there was obviously a lot of bodies involved. To be fair, I could have been low pitch side and might still not have been able to see that. So, yeah, uh, in untypical Tottenham fashion, we started really well. We played really well for 10 minutes and then, quite frankly, we were bang average for the rest of it. And What changed? What changed? Um not a lot. I just West Ham stopped giving us up opportunities. They started slowly and then improved, narrowed the game down a bit. I think realised they were a bit open on occasions. Um, made it more difficult for us to get on the outside with the likes of Werner and Johnson, to the extent of just sitting there and going, "Go and cross it for Sun against Zuma and Mavropanos." And obviously, Tottenham are not going to take up that option. So. Yeah, they they improved. They started badly, but then thoroughly deserved the, the draw they got later in the game. The, the front guys were really good. I said to you on our Patreon pod on Wednesday, what Kudos was outstanding. Yeah, um, Really, really good player. I think he's a player that's going to be of real interest to us in fantasy next year because I don't think his price will jump up too much. I think he'll be, if they have a good opening fit, set of fixtures towards the start of next year, he might be a really good alternative to Bowen who might be two and a half million more than him, for example. So, yeah, him playing off the left, I don't know if it diminishes his potential output a little bit, maybe, but still looked like a really good player. We had a big chat about Kudos, Pakatar and Bowen being like a, a really good attacking lineup for the majority yeah. of teams. And that's where the frustration comes from West Ham fans in terms of their play style. They'll benefit from having Edson Alvarez back this weekend, obviously returns from suspension. Um, it's another disappointment from my perspective that we didn't really take advantage of that so much. Admittedly, Socek and Ward-Prowse played very deep in the game and weren't going to allow us into those pockets as such. Um, when we did get there, the game just got shut down and became really narrow and we ended up going backwards or or sideways and stuff. I don't suppose people are looking at investing in West Ham new, despite Wolves, Fulham Palace not looking like a bad set of fixtures primarily because there's obviously no doubles coming or anything. Those who are on Bowen, I presume, are probably not going anywhere mm -hmm. unless they've suddenly got fear out of Phil Foden or something. I'd probably just stick. Yeah, I would. Rather than thrash that about. You might find you jump and Foden doesn't doesn't play as many minutes as you think. You know what you're going to get from Jared Bowen. And Wolves are obviously weakened at the moment. Admittedly, that's more in the offensive areas than the defensive areas. Then Fulham at home next week is great fixture yeah. for Jared Bowen. So I wouldn't be selling at the moment. Defensively, you wouldn't have much interest. Obviously, Fabianski's played in goal. We're not sure how long Ariola's out, but 
probably long enough that he's not going to be of any interest for the rest of this season. But I don't know where you really move to at the moment. For my team, obviously the fixture this weekend appeals. Don't think we'll be smashing them silly. No. As I said, their underlying defensive numbers are pretty good. I think if, if they, if, I'd be pleased if they picked the sort of team they picked against Fulham because I think that looks quite open and they'll struggle. When they get high, they'll struggle going back the other way. Sure. I don't think they'll pick a lineup that strong, though. I would imagine Sun probably stays through the middle because, again, limited minutes for Richarlison at the weekend. Um, but I guess that's going to increase. And even if Sun does start through the middle, it probably moves to the left earlier, I would suggest. Brennan Johnson's in really good form at the moment. I think he's a Very really well. interesting one for the wildcard 35 crowd. Because I've said this on another piece um, over the last week or so, that with him, his impact obviously off the bench is really strong. So for when those doubles turn up, you're not that worried about the two starts that you would be, oh, will he start twice? I think with Johnson, you're not so worried about it because his impact could be as good from the bench anyway. Mm. I think Ange left him on here because he's trying to really build him up. He was, ho he was hobbling for quite a while. Okay before he came off. And I think it's more fatigue related and I think it'll probably be fine for Sunday and it's the the narrative of playing against his old club. But I don't think you're investing in Tottenham, no, but it's one certainly to monitor over the next couple for those who maybe want to come back for him. He would probably be, if you said buy a Tottenham midfielder other than Son for the run-in, at the moment it would be him rather really? than Madison or Richarlison, yeah. That's music to my ears as a Madison wildcard owner. He's not playing well, mate. Yeah, I know. like I've been saying this every week for for a little while now. Um, that you know his capability, but I wouldn't be going there at the moment. Yeah. And if if I owned, it's a, it would be a really difficult one to sell this week. Head of Nottingham Forest at home, I'm sure he starts dilemma. again. But that's now three league games in a row. He's come off around sixty five minutes. Yeah, it's worth saying Kulusevski was no better in that area when he came on and replaced him but he's just not creating in the same way that you'd expect. And I keep saying, I don't think he's playing badly, but he's just not playing at James Madison levels that he was earlier in the season. So uh, at this minute, I don't think it'd be worth looking at from the people not on free hit 34. Would you advise if he doesn't play well against Forest and then it's Newcastle away, would you advise selling then? Uh, I mean, you'd look at 34 and you look at things like Eze and Elise say, yeah. Yeah. I think so. I mean, if Huang was back and then you're looking at Luton at home while Madison plays Arsenal in 35, yeah, you're going to look at alternatives. For, for Eze or Lisa, it's Fulham away. So you can even jump it and then jump back to Johnson yeah. or Richarlison instead. Obviously, look, if Richarlison gets back through the team, through the middle, that's more the one that you're going to want. I'm just not certain it's going to happen at this okay. moment. I think Timo Werner's doing fine. He's ticking over. I'm, no one should really be going there, I don't think, as one of their FPL forwards at the moment. But he is, he is ticking over and should, I don't know, hypothetically, two injury-prone players like Rasmus Hoyland and Alexander Rissak get injured in the next three or four weeks, there'll be a surge for him, you know? Yeah. Just because okay. of lack of forward options. Yeah, fair enough. Um, defensively, I think for those who were, who were going new, I don't probably know why he would be at this stage, but it's Udogi over Poro okay. at the moment. Both had good efforts in the game offensively. Udogi probably should have won it uh, at the end, although, as said, it would have been under That last 60 seconds. Was carnage. That was bonkers. And it was so <laughs> out of place with the rest of, yeah. of of the football match. West Ham defended very well. These games can become quite tough for us if the tempo becomes slow and stuff. It's not criticism of West Ham. It's the best way to stop us. And I think, you know, Forrest are going to apply similar tactics on Sunday. So yeah. for me, I know there'll be plenty of one a captain son, and you know his capability. There's no doubt about it, but not the best choice for me this week. Fair play. Any more from the Planet FPL Derby before we move on? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think so. Specifically, to be honest, no, I, I don't think many people are looking at investing in these two teams. No, um, and I don't think people will be selling their Tottenham players this week. So it's probably more of a, a, a case for after. Cool. Happy days. On to the Wednesday fixtures. Arsenal 2, Luton 0. Uh, I was there. Take it away. Sh shout out Andy Martin. Called the, the mass rotation. First time Arteta's made five changes since September 2021. And Andy is never wrong. And the people who think that he is are deluded. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, five changes to the Arsenal eleven. I, I did not see that coming, to be fair. And uh, I think the game was exactly what you'd expect with a rotated team from Arsenal and a Luton team who are like decimated with injuries at the minute. But saying that, despite that, I don't know if you were able to watch the game. I, I was really impressed by Luton. In spells, they were playing some really nice football, had us in dangerous areas. Gabriel was making more blocks than I wanted him to be doing in that game. Um, and yeah, it's I, I've got a real soft spot for them. I know like I shouldn't show any biases to any teams, but I do hope Luton stay up, to be honest. Uh, I just it would could, be a nice story if they did. It would be a really nice story, yeah. Uh, and Rob Edwards really, really, yeah. I, I, I really like him. I so think I. if they got if they went down, and it's not to say he'd walk out on them, but there'll be offers. Yeah. There'll be offers. Yeah, I think so as well. But um, yeah, like I said, Luton did well in spells, but I think for Arsenal, it was like just rotate the... Rotate five people, go in, get the three points, and on to the next one. The, the fluidity wasn't quite what you'd expect, but in the context, got guys out there like Nelson and Smith are hardly playing. Exactly. Played. Obviously, the big story was uh, yeah, no Saka in the squad. So, what's your instinct on next? Instinct is I think he'll be back and start because he uh, against Brighton. Um, obviously, he did play against City, and Arteta said he did train before uh, the Luton game. So. Um, yeah, I, I think he'll. I think they just gave him this one fully off, and I think he'll be back. Arteta did say this morning that he's not trained yet, but there is a session later today. Um, so I, I think he'll. This is just an opinion, not based on any information. I think he'll train and start against Brighton, get him ready for the Bayern Munich game next Tuesday. The only thing I'd say, and it's kind of part based on the Brighton lineup as well, I think it's Stupinan plays. Okay. And you've got to think the other way as well. Because he'll go. Yeah. He'll go. And it's not to say, I mean, Saka will, will do all his defensive, diligent work. We know that. But what I'm saying is it it might be a, a physical encounter for him. And you've got Munich Tuesday as well. Yeah. So you think is there a chance that they don't and, you know, put someone like Jesus on that side even? Possibly. But I'd say I think Arsenal are at a stage now where I'd, I think while Arteta is wary of the opposition's strengths, I think he very much plays the Arsenal's strengths and tries to get them to adapt to Arsenal more than like making massive changes to like, I think he obviously tweaks things based on the opposition. I don't think he'd go to the lengths of moving Saka out uh, because of a Stupinan, for example, but it's a, it's a possibility. He said, I, I, I tell you what, I'm cautious as well. Go on. You manage as bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. Like many others. So, no, yeah. well, it's not a secret that I don't like him. Most neutrals no, no, don't. But Whatever. If you're going to slate him, you have to do it to the others as no, well. No, no, I, 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 no. I don't. <laughs> he's dislikable. We've been over this before. Anyway, it's off topic. But in the past, he's been, well, he hasn't trained yet. We don't know where he's at. Da, 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 da. And he said that again. But he'd also dislike, he'd said that he should be fine. But he's, he's been quite clear. He's like, it's not a major problem. He kind of almost alluded to say, like, if it had been a more high-profile game, probably would have played, for example. I don't know. Just a bit cautious it might be the other way. And okay. there might be more of a problem. Yeah. I think buy so. a sacker this week, would you? But he's also... No. Would, uh, certainly, if you're heading towards a bench boost 34 or even just heading that way, you're not selling him, are you? You can't. No, not at all. And this is what... Yeah, it's like the kind of don't buy, don't sell sort of thing. It's a... Uh... Yeah, I, that's why I, I just rolled it this week because I had Son to sack a planned. And I just thought, I know obviously with hindsight, Son didn't do anything, but the, there was too much uncertainty around Saka for me. But yeah, I think it's just a case of, yeah, you just have to kind of see what happens this weekend, really. Obviously, look, if if it became clear that he's not going to play, then I, you know, I'm not saying, oh yeah, just hold it for the sake yeah. of it. But without information like that, like I don't think you could consider moving it to... Foden or Sun or anything like that because of just what's immediately in front of you. Um, tough game though. And do you know what's interesting with Brighton is that their their underlying numbers are not as bad as what it is on the eye. Like they okay. always concede, right? And they've just kept a clean sheet. But normally they, but their underlines are, are decent. Yeah, it's going to be a tough they're game. Always yeah. a challenge. You saw what Liverpool got from them last, and Liverpool deserved to beat them, right? Liverpool had too many chances. That's the other flip. Yeah, you can have a, a lot of chances going the other way. Challenge though, yeah, I think it's a big. shame for Brighton that they've had Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, which obviously you've also had, and that's the biggest reason, by the way, for this rotation. So when we said earlier about Bournemouth's rotation, there's two examples now. Whatever midweek fixtures, we've seen quite a bit. You know, sort of four or five changes. 
With Arsenal in 34, I don't think you'll see that the same way. No. I think it just, they've literally, Arteta's made a decision and gone, this is what we got over this period. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, with respect to Luton, whatever team we put out should should have enough. Yeah, and it did, it right? Yeah. And it's even, it's cruised through the second half. What was your XG in the second half? It was about 0 0.09 or something, wasn't it? it was yeah, cruised it was, for it. didn't it? Yeah, it was a, a gear two kind of game. But obviously there was returns for Odegaard and Havertz. Seen a few people going for Havertz actually recently. Yeah. Uh, don't hate it. I think he'll consistently be in the lineup, whether it's in the left eight or up front capacity. Uh, Odegaard doing what he does. And yeah, not not much to write home which, about. Which really. one would you go for from them two? I, I guess that would be more of a debate heading towards 34. I would still go Odegaard just because I think, as you've seen in this game, it's the minutes. He's consistently there. He arrives in the box. He, uh, yeah, he's always on the edge of the box for the cutback. But with, I'd say Havertz has more hall potential, but I personally would go Odegaard. Yeah, I'd say what's interesting about it is, um, and again, need, although I, I said that I don't think we'll rotate much in 34, we should factor that the second leg against Bayern is the Wednesday before. Yeah. 34 so you play Bayern the Wednesday Wolves the Saturday Chelsea the Tuesday and then it's the North London Derby afterwards you might it might end up though if you go through in the Champions League uh, or even definitely if you go out then there's a five day gap mm. between the Chelsea Tottenham fixtures which I think then he might push hard for the three, three fixtures rather than this period you've had four fixtures three days three days three days three days I think though it, interestingly for people like me who free here how I feel about the team that lines up against Wolves might determine what I go for as a third Arsenal asset. So barring injury, I'm not going to move Gabriel for 34. Yeah. Saka would certainly be in there as long as he's fit. The third one then becomes like Wyatt, Saliba, Raya, Odegaard, Havertz. There's a choice there. Yeah. And I just wonder if, if I think Havertz will play at Wolves, if that becomes the choice for me. Because I would certainly think he played for you against Chelsea. Yeah, I do as well. Um, and that could be a really nice one to to punt into. I keep thinking double Arsenal defence. Sure, that's a challenge in thirty four Wolves away, and then Chelsea at home. For all the you know, things being said about Chelsea, they score regularly enough. Yeah, and I've got a player individually. We'll talk about in a bit, obviously. So, mm, yeah. To be confirmed, I, if I was trying to buy the third Arsenal one, you're probably tempted to do it now, I guess. Like, if you're on two Liverpool, two Arsenal, and you think, oh, I want to get some Palace 34, it probably becomes the Arsenal player now. Yeah, I, I've been consistent in this for a long time. I'm very much in the double defence camp. Like, I just think you know what you're getting. And sure, like, even, I get it, the, the run is tough, but I, I still think the level of this Arsenal defence is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, that Sure, the run's tough, but... Would I be surprised if Arsenal went and got three, four clean sheets on the bounce? Not particularly, to be honest. Yeah, and we've also seen, that's part of what I said about considering Raya for myself as a, as an actual transfer. We've also obviously seen um, that Arsenal can keep clean sheet anywhere now. They keep clean yeah. sheet at City. You look at things like Tottenham away, United away. It's not to say that they definitely will. Um, and it's probably less likely than likely, but capable. We know the capabilities. Yeah. There's that's no the intention for me to yeah. leave Gabriel out this weekend. No, just a quick one before we move on, because I've seen a few people messaging me about the fullbacks, like White, Kivio. I just, if you're going for a defender, I would just stick with the centre-backs. White, even though he's so durable, plays 90 minutes, I think there will be a game where Tommy Asu comes in. I don't know what one that will be, um, but I, I don't think Ben White will start every single Premier League game until the end of the season. I think the centre-backs will. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to think what game you'd have where that would be enough of a a concern could it be this uh, weekend? sorry it's more for people buying so like if you're buying i would go with the center but if if you've got him like no need to sell but i don't know no, no, no. Yeah. i'm just i'm just saying looking at your fiction i'm trying to think which one would be the one where you, there would be concern enough to use tommy asu like i'd said to you that i thought bernardo silver would play on the right against you yeah therefore he wouldn't play tommy asu as soon as doku went out they went yeah sod that i'm gonna put tommy yeah. asu out there i'm trying to think of of the games you've got coming up where he'd look at one and think yeah this would be a good one to play tommy asu rather than white i don't it's more from it the lens of giving white a rest more than like oh we need tommy asu in for the profile of this winger that's more the perspective i'm coming at it from i would suggest then the most likely one would be balls away Boom. Wolves away, Bournemouth at home potentially. It's, um, yeah, I think I think there'll be one though. If you if you, if you went out the Champions League, by the time you get to Bournemouth, it don't matter no more, mate. Yeah, true. 
True. But um, As yeah. I've told you, though, unfortunately, you won't go out of the Champions League. Ah, uh, for Luton, mm -hmm. you and I have both just both watched them firsthand. And yeah, exactly what you said. Kind of giving the flowers, right? Credit yeah. to them, especially with the injuries they've got at the moment. I assume they went back to a back three against you, Clayton. That, that's how it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly so obviously they played right. a back four against my team. They were so heavy man to man against mine. Did they do yeah. that against you? Or yeah, not? They, they did in periods. But then Rob Edwards gave a really good um, interview after the game saying, like, you try to go man to man, but then you lose it in a period and you're kind of forced into a zonal area that you don't want to be in. So uh, I think they tried it, but. Obviously, Arsenal off the ball were just a little bit too much for them. Yeah, for those who still got Luton assets, if you've held through Tottenham away and Arsenal away, I suppose there's, there's a good reason why you're still holding. There'll certainly be people with Doughty. It's not a terrible one to play this week, obviously, Bournemouth at home. But just be aware that there's so many defensive issues for them at the moment. Edwards did hint that one of Osho or Burt could be back this weekend. Yeah. And it would be helpful, but they are decimated with injuries. They've got four home games left of Bournemouth, Brentford, Everton, Fulham. It will define them. Yeah, 100%. Their home form against <clears throat> weaker teams this season has not been good. No. They've lost to Sheffield United, they've lost to Burnley. They drew with Forest. Yeah. Fair play. Uh, on to the next one. Brentford nil, Brighton nil. A thriller by the sounds of it. Yeah, it wasn't, mate. I watched the first half of this and it wasn't great at all. Um, did you see the drama pre-game? I didn't know. With Tony? No. What, what have I missed? So Brentford tweeted 15 minutes before kickoff, changed the lineup, and Bumo's in for Tony. It was the official Brentford account. Oh, wow. Okay. They deleted it. But that's what they tweeted. So I, I, I know people in Sky took him out. Oh, no. Well, you would, the official account yeah. tweeted it. And people sitting there going, oh, I can go to, like, Nunes tomorrow or, or someone else who was playing that night, Punt Alvarez or whatever. Yeah, it was people who took him out. Um, you don't doubt if it comes to, if the official account so tweets that, 15 minutes yeah. before kickoff is not playing. I know there's a few people bought him and sold him. Do you think there was a chance he wasn't? Or do you think that was just an admin error? No, but I, I've not seen anything that's confirmed why that happened. But 100%, that's what Brentford tweeted 15 minutes before kickoff. Wow. You know, it wasn't one of them kind of, Lazy ones look like they'd been hacked. It was like, yeah, yeah Tony's like out. A legitimate we've got to make, we've been forced to change. Tony's out. Bumo's starting. They put a picture of Bumo looking like it's from the warm up. Yeah. Damn. And then the teams come out and Tony was still there. I don't know if that was to try for Brighton. Think, I don't think they deleted the tweet till after the game started. Whoa. Okay. I don't think so. Anyway, he played. Um, not that he did anything. He had one half decent moment in the in the first half where he cut inside. I think it was Van Heck, and he should have taken an extra touch. And he kind of swung his foot at it. He hasn't scored Tony. I think since they played Liverpool. Okay. In game with twenty five, about seven or so, he hasn't scored. That won't go on forever. I'm not. I'm not sitting there as a Tony owner worried about that. No. There's a choice for me to play him or Bailey this weekend. And I think I just play Tony, I think. I think so, yeah. I think uh, so. To me, that's not really close. I'm going to regret saying that, but... They will definitely change to a back four this game or the next game, I think. Okay. But not sure which. The one interesting one will be in terms of a line for people, and it probably doesn't matter so much for this week, but it might for 33, was Keen Lewis Potter played again at left wing back rather than Sergio Reggion. And I was annoyed with myself that I didn't discuss this with Suj on Sunday night. Not that I thought that would happen, but I was annoyed that I didn't discuss that. I thought Lewis Potter against Manchester United was excellent. Okay. He was really good. It was the best I'd seen of him. And it didn't, in reflection, it didn't surprise me that he stayed in the team because his performance was so good. Now, I only watched the first half of this and, and it wasn't great. And obviously Brentford spent large periods without the ball. But there's no guarantee that Reggion will come back in. Sure. The thing with Reggie is that concentration is bad. However, go back to a back four, you would think he's a natural for a left back. The back four enables them to get to the position that Visser, Tony and Bumo all play, right? Yeah. That's why they, That's why you imagine they'll want to do it. And on paper, you think, well, they won't do it at Villa. But Sheffield United after that? No, but they might do it at Villa. Oh, okay. Purely because... Frank has been very clear. He's like, I'm going to get Bumo back in this team as quickly as I can. And there's also the admin error here where we know 
or we think, that Boomo was then going to start. Yeah. So it can't be that far off being ready. Frank has basically said he's ready. Well, he I came think, on, right? I think this is playing pretty well at the moment. Be harsh for him to come out. Now, could they just go Boomo Tony up front at Villa? Sure. Of course they could. But imagine for Sheffield United, they'll go back to a back four. They'll have winnable runs for the rest of the season. And I think they'll get the points they need to pull themselves away from the relative shit that they're in. But they're ticking over. So they're on, what, 28? That's six clear of Luton. I mean, they shouldn't be safe on that points yeah. total. But they've. I think with the fixtures they got left, I don't really hold much concern for them. Me either. And I, I think a switch is coming. And I think very interestingly for Brentford, for people like me on free hit 34, wildcard 35, this time next week we're going to be going home. Yeah. And I already said about, ah, oh, sod it. Arsenal are the best defensively. If I want to make a keep change, just go Raya. Don't want to cut myself off of that Bailey Boomo move in case I decide to go Boomo for 33. Lacken could be the one. And if he if he gets minutes this week that's good enough, that's a likely transfer for me in game week 33, I think. I need to see the stats to back this up. I always feel like he's uh, in and around save points. And yeah, he tends to have a couple of holes in him, Flecken as well. Save points? Oh, Fleckham. Yeah. Yeah, what I kind of concluded as well was I might just look at him in 33 as well. Yeah. Rather than, it's Villa away this week. You're not fancying anything. No, of course. So but if I genuinely him. did land, ne land next week and go, I don't know what to do here with a second transfer, yeah, I would maybe consider that. Because even against an opponent like Sheffield United, yeah, the whole potential is there. You know, the other one I was looking at as well was Arnana. Sounds okay. ridiculous because they're playing Liverpool this week, right? Yeah. But every time they do pull off a clean sheet, he's eight only holes. Yeah, basically. He's he's yeah. normally like eight or nine if they get like a clean sheet. Even last night he's got two, despite them conceding four, because he's made six saves. Yeah. And he has to make so many saves. I'll come back to that in a bit. So yeah, I even wondered about that, maybe. So I know it's okay. like oh, you're overthinking, James. Just played the Bravka for his one point at Fulham and and not bother. Yeah, Flecken will be a reasonable one, particularly for those... In fact, Brentford assets just generally from 33 onwards, for those without chips and not bench boosting and stuff like that, are going to be perfectly reasonable. I'm keen to keep an eye on them, even for the wildcard 35, because the running's good. Yeah. Um, And those heading for bench boost are not going Brentford on wildcard 35, so there's an alternative route to take there. Again, if you're working through, even in 34... You know, if you end up playing like a Tony or a Boomer away to Luton as part of a bench boost in 34, yeah, like, that's fine. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. It's worse things that can happen for you. Um, for Brighton, rotation, as you'd have expected. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder if for Bruggen might be becoming first choice. I'm not suggesting anyone goes there as their option, but I think picking keepers for bench boost 37 currently looks rough and maybe just keep an eye on that. I don't know. I have an inkling now that he might be becoming the number one. He's put in a couple of good displays. He, he played well at Liverpool, despite them getting beat. Van Heck Dunk stay in the team. Gross stay in the team. The rest of it becomes, as per usual, a lottery. Yeah. João Pedro was back. Mm -hmm. And fitness-wise, of what I watched in the first half, he looked fine. They were moving very much from a back four to a back three in possession, so they pushed uh, João Veltman who's not really the most suitable to do it quite high on the right-hand side. Adingra held touchline on the left. Without the ball, João Pedro kind of funneled towards the, the left-hand side and Lalana kind of stayed as the, the front, as the first point okay. of defence and stuff. Quite interesting, but they can do unique and different things. There's a few things that will definitely change for the lineup against Arsenal. One is a certainty that Danny Welbeck will play up front. Yeah. So if someone's suddenly gone, ah, João Pedro, brilliant. Listen, João Pedro may well play again but I'm fairly certain that Danny Welbeck will play at Arsenal. And I still think that Danny Welbeck is part of what Roberto De Zerbi primarily wants to do. But I've spoken about this with João Pedro. He might become the one of choice that lands for people who want a third forward heading towards game week 37. But the fixtures aren't great otherwise. And that obviously starts with, with this week at home to Arsenal. So I think Brighton are a monitor. At the moment, Van Heck is the most likely one to make it for me. Uh, just four million defender, fine. I'd yeah. almost be looking at him, I think, because I'm not bench boosting and I'll be wild carding in that direction, though. I'll almost look at him as 12th man. Whereas if I get an injury and can't replace something, fine, he's got a double instead. That's kind of my take on him Sure. at the moment. They'll give you a game, Kites. 
Ah, oh, I know they will. I'm just gonna, mm-hmm. We'll see that th- prediction I think they'll later. go down and win, but they'll give you a game. I think it'll be very, very tight. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, moving it on from a 0-0 to a 4-1. Man City 4, Aston Villa 1, Phil Foden hat-trick. You owned him, I think? Yeah, you said you yeah, owned Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might sell him. <laughs> wow, that's... A, yeah, bank the points and cash it in. Well, it's something I'm going to think about today. If, if, if the news came out that he wasn't in the team... Do I consider it? Uh, I, yeah, I think if there's other people... Considering I'm on like minutes. a two-week gig. Now, the problem is you would be looking at Luton next week and going, I'm just going to buy him back, possibly. Um, so I don't think I'd go down that room because, like I said, I've got a good bench this week. I'd just put him on the bench, I think. It would be more likely for me, but I'll, I'll give it a bit of thought. Yeah, I would not be surprised at all if he doesn't start that fixture tomorrow. Yeah. Should think What's about it? it logically. Holland and De Bruyne have had a full rest. So we yeah. assume they'll play won't they? Or will he just hold De Bruyne back for, for Madrid on Tuesday? Yeah, not sure. Might. I'll keep an eye on uh, Luke Disable's timeline and the other predictors. Well, the, the, the guys who have the City legs will probably have something when it's the 12.30 kickoff. Yeah. So, yeah, hold your transfers till 10.55 tomorrow morning, probably, guys, um, as that's the 12.30 kickoff. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some City information. What we can't doubt is obviously Haaland will now play. Yeah. That's, I presume, is a certainty. I think um, so, yeah. The rest is in. Guardiola was at pains to reiterate that he still has the best striker in the world after the game. And no one's particularly arguing in terms of his goal scoring output, although Alexander Isak wants to have an argument with an empty room now. I've said that. So, Holland, obviously, I, I think with that information, Holland leaps back above the likes of Sun for captaincy this week. If people really? weren't thinking that way. But you know Palace are going to be back five without the ball. Yeah, I think they can make it difficult, you know. Of course they can. Of course they can. I mean, Palace have have not been overrun by anyone really since Oliver Glasner came in. They they do have an issue, Palace, where they're conceding, ironically, should I sell Foden if he's bench? Palace have an issue. I, I spoke about this after they played us. I'd say, I bet substitutes start scoring goals against them because I right. think he's working them harder in preparation for next year in terms of their off-the-ball stuff. And I think they're fatiguing a bit later in games. Sure. Um, it might even be that to bear in mind if there was a surprise benching this week for a Manchester City player. Haaland won't be one of them. As I said, I think it's Haaland versus Palmer for the captaincy for me. In terms of the goalkeeper situation I've got, if Pep did say, yeah, Edison's got no chance till May... That's a good point. I'll, I'll, Ortega, I'll, yeah. I'll buy Ortega, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, Palace that. away, Luton at home, yeah. I'll, I'll go there. Yeah, good point. But my, Pep had said Edison was nowhere near ready, but then we we thought he was training before Arsenal. So I think he he's he can't be that far away. So I need a bit of clarity on that to consider that sort of move. But yeah, for, for two games, I think that leaps above Petrovic for the move. And I don't really want to get Petrovic. It's already got Gusto. Yeah. And they're conceding goals anyway. Um, so I don't really want to go into that. Again, music you know, to my ears. I, I know, it's, I know it's Sheffield United and Everton, but I wouldn't be surprised if they both score against Chelsea. That's the conclusion I've come to, particularly after watching that again last night. So eyes on Ortega maybe as a short-term one for me. For most others who want to um, invest in City, and I guess there'll be a, probably a, a number might wildcard in 33 specifically to then free hit 34 and come off the other side. I think those particularly have got kind of injury problems, not happy with the team, can't wait anymore. That will happen. I can't wait anymore. Yeah. Get that. And you'd have City, Liverpool and Arsenal all with home fixtures again. I can see that potentially appealing for some. And at that point, you're going to you're gonna look at a City defensive. You're going to under that, you're going to go Haaland, Foden, and I think you're going to want a City defensive one. Best choice in your opinion, Clates, would I be? I think it's Vardy, old mate. Honestly, yeah, I, I agree with that Ake, at the moment. With, do you? With the Ake injury as well. I think it's him. 4.8, I think he is. I just think if you're getting it specifically for 37, good luck with that. Yeah. It's too far away to have any clue what City defender is going to play twice in 37 or if it's even going to matter. Yeah. They might have the title one. They might be completely out of the race. Yeah. Who knows over this little period. So... I obviously hope they're done one way or the other before they play my team in 37, right? Hopefully that's they've done you, you know what I mean, rather than the other way around. I've become a closet Liverpool fan now as well. <laughs> I I'm, can I'm, tell, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm happy to admit that. Um just for the next six weeks or so, other than other than game week 36, obviously. 
Um, yeah, if Liverpool could see you off before 36, that would also be handy. That also requires my team to do something against you in 35. Yeah, I think Vardy, although, yeah, I, uh, I agree with that. But there's minutes there for Rico Lewis, isn't there? Not yeah, the there is. That's obviously really cheap. He inverted from right back a lot, went into midfield. Bernardo Silva played a higher role. Yeah, Doku and Grealish played in the wide areas, which is obviously how they finish against you. That Jeremy Doku is... He's got all the ability, but I've spoken about this before. I think he must do Haaland's brain him. Because you don't know what he's going to do, mate. Yeah, You don't know when that cross is coming or how it's coming. And I think there's times I've seen Haaland, I'm not making this move now. I it was After they beat Man United, I spoke about it. So he's not making a move, Haaland, because he doesn't know if... He Doc doesn't know if he's going to get it, yeah. Yeah, whereas with Grealish or Bernardo's or Foden's, Haaland knows what he's getting service-wise, obviously De Bruyne as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if Doku comes back out the team because I know Haaland's going back in it at the weekend. So, yeah, it's Foden, Haaland, and then I think yeah, Vardial, if people did want to look defensively. Eyes on Ortega, subject to the Edison situation. They well deserve to win. Obviously, Foden's got a brilliant hat-trick, although yeah. the first one is obviously very fortuitous because of the wall. His expected goals was 0.47, according to FOTMOB. Well, that's what I said. His combined distance yeah. of goals is about 65 yards or so, isn't it? So, yeah, that's not going to happen very often. But then when you've got players of that quality, you, you shouldn't rule out that sort of thing happening. Um yeah, I, I completely get people going to be interesting. But I think, in any case, if you are buying City New this week, try and leave it till the morning where possible. I realise not everyone can do that. I probably wouldn't buy this week. I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't be looking at that. I hope phone's got actually. I've got to fix that immediately. I, I, unless you're in a really bad situation, I don't think I'll do that this week. Next week will be scarier. Yeah. Against Luton. And, and I think it's worth reminding people it's Madrid Tuesday, Luton Saturday, Luton Wednesday. So you go, oh, they'll rotate against Luton like Arsenal did. The spacing of them games, that extra day either side is important. I don't think City mass rotate when they play Luton in 33. So say that again. So it's Madrid Tuesday, Luton Saturday. Saturday and then Madrid Madrid Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Mm. So it's the same for you. You're not going to mass rotate against Villa, I don't think. No, I don't think so either. Although your game's obviously the Sunday. But for City, it's perfect four days afterwards. It's not to say City definitely picked their first eleven. But I'm saying I wouldn't doubt Haaland playing the Luton game, for example. And so for those getting annoyed it, with him, oh, we've got all these players doing, he's 14 million, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, that's game with 33 caps in for me. Yeah. Haaland, don't want to argue with that at all with Luton's defensive issues. Despite the fact, yes, yeah, sure, they've done perfectly reasonable against our two teams over the last week or so. Yeah, City, with maybe looking at a goal difference, yeah, no. No, no, not an argument. On Villa, it did Lots all right, really, considering the circumstance. Well, Emmy Martinez came out through illness. Yeah. I think um, Unai Emery made a decision here based on being without the likes of Watkins and McGinn to to give people a chance and almost treat this like a bit of free a, a free swing. I think that Duran and Diaby were really lively. Um which uh, should be a note of caution for someone like me with Bailey, who I kind of, I was going to say, at the end of my table with. I'm, I'm not, actually, because he's been really good for me, but I, I'm certainly in a position where I'm prepared to to lose it, basically. Um, Diaby was good. Durant took the goal very well. He's a very really willing worker and runner, and he's very good technically. He links the play really well, John Duran. He would, um, I imagine, under the extraordinary circumstance where Ollie Watkins joins Tottenham for £150 million in the summer, um, Villa would be all right with John Duran up front in the yeah. long-term future. He was linked with Chelsea in January, wasn't he? I missed that. Okay. Yeah, he was, John Duran, yeah. Because what does Chelsea need? More young players. <laughs> um, yeah, Villa were, were, were in this without being in it, let's say. You always felt that City had him at arm's length and were going to win the game. But even like Douglas Luiz had a good moment at 2 1 as well. They had the odd moment. 4 1 was harsh okay. in the end. City certainly deserved to win. You'd obviously get changes to that Villa lineup again at the weekend. So Pau Torres, I'd expect to come back in. Alex Moreno, I'd expect to come back in. John McGinn will definitely come back in. I would expect Bailey to come back in. Watkins, obviously, fitness dependent. It looks like most have already sold 
Watkins. It'd be really inter- if he did play. It'd be really interesting to see what his EO would be at the weekend. Yeah. Because last time below a hundred in a while, maybe so many people will have come off, and it's it's perfectly understandable. Just a reminder, though, if you're stuck and you've got other problems, if it looks like he's going to play, even if you're bench boosting thirty four, Bournemouth at home thirty four is fine for an Ollie Watkins. You having a bench boost with that, it's fine. So I think the the two home games Villa have in the next three are important for them. If they win them both, I think that there's every chance they'll still finish fourth. Okay. If if they don't win on Saturday, they'll they'll get nervous. Yeah, you'll breathe um, Tottenham breathing down their neck now. Yeah, but I, the, both of us, I think, have every right, particularly after last night again, to feel completely safe as in fourth and fifth. It's very difficult to foresee anyone below, even with the fixture list. Villa and Tottenham both got really difficult. The gap just looks too big. Yeah, I've said this for a while. I think I don't know in what order, but I think it'll be Villa, Tottenham, fourth, fifth. Yeah. Yeah, any more for any more on it, that? It'll be it'll be close between Villa. Top. I don't think you're investing in Villa. No, City we've covered, mate. Happy days. On to yesterday's games. Uh, Liverpool three, Sheffield United one, and at one point it was potentially squeaky bum time, but I always felt like Liverpool were going to get the win. So I was watching Chelsea United. Well, I watched the first half of this, and I was watching Chelsea United, and then it come up that Sheffield United had equalised. So I thought, oh, let's 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 whack it back over. Um, because it was approaching half time at Chelsea United anyway. Then I missed yeah. Bruno Fernandez score. Typical. Um, as I turned it over to the Liverpool game, all I saw was Salah going off. Ah. I was like, no way. The, the clock was like 59 40 or so. Yeah. What a sum up of the game week. Those who'd captain Salah, which we know was obviously the majority, must have been Holland and Saka zero pointers. That was me. I uh, obviously I'm an Arsenal fan, so I was hoping Liverpool would blank and get nothing. But with the fantasy cap, I was like, oh, I've won here. Like all in sack and nothing. Salah's home, Sheffield United. I was like, oh yeah, probably hat trick coming here. Yeah, and it was nothing like the Brighton game. I think he had three efforts <laughs> in his hour or so. Um, but I think his XG was about zero point one four or something. Um, there was always a kind of cautious warning. Look, you, you're going to get a back five instead. That holds a little bit of relevance. Um, I actually think, by the way, going back to captaincy, I think Salah is a better choice this week than Son. Okay, you're really not keen on Son then? No, I'm keen on attacking Manchester United's defensive numbers. Yeah, That's we'll get I'm on that. On. It's uh, bad. Um, so yeah, no no major concern on that. I, I Listen, I've been here before with Mo Salah away to Old Trafford and not owned, and I'm in a rare position this time where I've got it, and I'm happy that he's sitting there. Yeah. And no, I do think probably Haaland or Palmer are better choices this week, but if someone wants to captain Mo Salah this weekend, I am not going to talk anyone out Me of it either. at all. Because um, he'll find the space, certainly, way more of a... And let's be honest, just based on average shots against Manchester United, we could probably put Salah around four or five, I think, on Sunday. Yeah. Just some kind of a power of that. So, yeah, he's perfectly reasonable for the weekend. I think big one as well. Endo was uh, rested, so should come back in. And that should mean a more advanced role again for Alexis McAllister, whose goal was a thing of beauty. Um, he's just got that in his locker, it feels like. Yeah, it, it was a it was a wow when he hit it. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. You, you knew it was pure. He just cuts across it. He's done that the, before. There's an angle well, behind Van Dyke, isn't it? We could see, yeah. Good luck saving that, mate. You've yeah, got no chance. And what's that? Seven in a row. He's returned in now. I think Is it? It's McAllister. Yeah. Oh wow. So, um, even in this deeper role, he's he's obviously still found a return. Now, listen, obviously that's a how wits are thunder bastard from distance, but in the more advanced position recently, where he's been playing ahead of Endo, he's been chipping in. And here's what I do know about him as well: he'll play twice in thirty-four. Yeah. Like, if that matters to people, Fulham away and Everton away, yeah, he'd be playing. And if he's playing as an eight, I think that's quite interesting. There'll be a, a lot of, well, is, is Diaz going to play twice? It, it, Jota, we think, is going to be borderline whether he's back. Is Nunes going to play twice? Yeah, it could easily be for me on free hit, like Salah, Van Dijk. I might just go McAllister. Really? Okay. Yeah, I might do. I might do. Because I know, I know what I'm getting. Yeah. I don't know what I'm getting returns, but I know what I'm getting in terms of him on the pitch. And if even if Mo got if Mo loses any minutes, it's on the pens and stuff as well, isn't he? Yeah, that's true. So he's ticking over really nicely. I'm not sure I'd want to go and buy him. 
per se, but I think I can understand why people heading towards 34 are looking at him. I also think, I said this on Sunday as well, if people did go there, it's almost inevitable from there you end up with like Gordon or Garnacho in 35, I think, yeah. if you go down that route. But he's ticking over nicely. Um, Connor Bradley owners also had their game week summed up by um, a comical own goal, which it was, there's nothing he could do about it. it just Again, I hits him, him and, started him. And goes through Kelleher's legs. You're, I mean, zero pointer. I'm the chef United. You're <laughs> gutted, aren't you? You're you're just counting the you're counting the minimum six points from the minute it kicks off, or maybe you weren't because James McAtee should have scored for Sheffield United in the first minute, um, yeah. and they nearly scored from the corner straight afterwards as well. They equip themselves fine, Sheffield United. Just uh, a kind of typical one for them when they're playing a, a team that's obviously far superior. You're going to get done eventually. Yeah. In the end, I'm I'm afraid, and that that's been a theme for them for a lot of the season in some of these games that have been tighter. So I I think with Sheffield United, I've, I've heard a little bit of noise of sort of Diaz and McAtee for those heading towards 34. McAtee obviously played last night, but then Ollie McBurney didn't. And I think McBurney was pretty important to the the, the performance against Fulham at the weekend before. So I think McAtee, uh, McBurney will probably come back in against Chelsea. Okay. And McBurney would certainly take some of McAtee's minutes in 34. McAtee and, and Diaz both appeal because potentially if they play like last night, they're both OOP. Diaz is the one that's the goal scoring potential, really, though. So the first game of the double in 34 is Burnley at home. Yeah. And um, Man United away, like. That, yeah, it's they, true. They'll have chances. They'll have chances. <laughs> like, I, I'm not even trying to be horrible there. I genuinely think they will. Um, I would not be buying those players personally, but I might have a look at Diaz, maybe. For 34. I still don't see me picking him over, like, if Alise's fit. No. Or Eze. Would I even want to pick him over Garnacho, who would just have Sheffield United at home no, at a similar price? I'm not, not sure. Yeah. Man. So, I think largely overlooking it. In terms of the Liverpool defensive ones, well, Van Dijk's your only one that's, that's safe. Yeah. You think you've got a bit more of Conor Bradley, because we think now Trent and Alisson are not going to be available this week. And again, it might even be pushing towards 34 now, rather than 33. But it could easily be Gomez at right back and Robertson's back now at, at left yeah. back at Old Trafford on Sunday. So if you owned it, would you start it? I guess it's dependent on other players, isn't it? I'm looking to move Bradley on personally. Like I said, I'm looking at a brave way, an eight and Ori or something. Just feel like, yeah, it's a nice time to move on to something else for me personally. Yeah, Everton fans especially just laughed at you, mate. Just, just. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Burnley at home and then... Everton fans yeah. have just gone, you want to sell from the best team in the league to the worst. Well, they're not one of the best defensively, though, are they? Liverpool. Uh, no, OK, fine. Yeah. No, no, they'll, I wasn't they'll, even they'll saying I mean, to be fair, Everton's defensive have, have been five, about fifth or yeah. sixth for goals conceded Everton, I think. It's just a shame about goals scored. OK, yeah, I mean, uh, Liverpool made hard work of this, but I'm not surprised. I... I I, sh I didn't think Nunes would start, for example, because yeah. I just thought they'd be saving something in the tank for United. And I think the whole game was saving something in the tank. Then they then the panic obviously set in after Sheffield United scored for 10, 15 minutes or so. But you didn't really think that they weren't going to win it. Not for a second, no. Uh, they really picked up um, a different tempo when Gakpo came on. Gakpo particularly came on and was tearing about and it lifted their their energy. That's not to say Gakpo is a threat to Nunes, Diaz or, or Salah. He obviously is a minutes threat, but I'm pretty sure Salah, Nunes, Diaz will be the front three at uh, uh, Man United on Sunday. Yeah. Agree. Are we moving on to the thriller, the final yeah, game of the game week? Chelsea 4, Man United 3. Uh, you hear the terms Prime Barclays thrown around quite a lot. I feel like this was absolutely bonkers. I don't even know where to start with this. Um, here's where I'll start. Um, my emotions during the game were quite interesting because I have no love lost for Chelsea, but I was sitting there going, yeah, do you know what? I don't mind if, if Chelsea do the business here, to be honest. I'm I'm quite happy with that. Why? Um, well, because United, were, if United won, there was six points behind us, right? Oh, again, I... I... I don't think you need to worry We've got about tough them. fixtures, though. Right? So, looking at it and going, hmm, not sure I want United to win a game like that. So, Chelsea go two up, and I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm already looking at like my flights to Bulgaria and Romania and 
and all sorts, just in case Villa still beat my team and stuff like that. Um, and then they threw it away. I was, I was pretty pissed off with Chelsea <laughs> <laughs> that they they threw the game away. And then obviously they, they've won it back at the end, and you can completely get the emotions of that. Where you know people say, "Oh, Chelsea are still tenth or whatever they are." You win a game of football. I, I went through this with against us against Sheffield United in game week five. You win a game of football like that. I don't give a shit who it's against. Never mind. I mean, especially against the Manchester United, you're gonna go mental. Yeah. The context you're a of robot ev- if you don't. the context of everything else does not matter. It's just one game of football where you're losing in the 98th, 99th minute or so, and you win. Yeah. Took my record for latest Premier League win, but I, I don't care. Mentally, I'm keeping my own one. <laughs> um, for United, we I mean, might as well just get onto them first in terms of these numbers. Yeah. So I, I mentioned on Sunday night's pod that they'd conceded the most shots of any Premier League team in 2024. Mm-hmm. We can go one better than that now. That's any team in Europe's top five leagues. Wow. That is it's, it's pathetic. That is really bad. I mean, it's rough. Considering like 25 shots every game, mate. Yeah. Do you know? I, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting because I, I've said this for a while. Structurally, I just don't see anything from them. And I think it's a huge coaching problem. Uh, and I don't know. I feel... Yeah, I, I think that's a huge coaching problem with Man United. When you're when you're talking about statistics like that, with the quality of players they do have, for me, that's a coaching thing there. I think he's. I, I think I, he's I, terrible. I, I, I also think there's an individual thing as well. Sometimes there's certain things you can't legislate for. Anyone who's watching the game live would have had a moment where they've gone, "What's Casemiro done there?" So there was a. I, I might have been a one nil or two nil. Um, someone ran past Casemiro. And if I said to you he was running back in a trot, I'd have been being kind. I just, what is that? Are you are you completely unfit? Are you injured? What is it? Yeah. Because Casemiro uh, was extraordinary for United for six months last year, right? It was brilliant. He, he actually transformed what they were doing in that area of the pitch. And we said he needed help in it. We played with Mino, right? So... That's in the first half. It's not like, oh, it's 10 minutes ago and you've got nothing left in the tank. You're an old man. I get it. This was early in the game and he just had no interest. No, and Mudrick should have scored. Mm. Now that, it's not on the manager. You might say it's on the manager's issue to pick that sort of player. It's not on the manager. But That's a mentality it, issue as well, mate. But is it on the manager to create a structure where you don't get exposed like that? Because again, we've spoken about Xhaka, Jorginho, and I've seen those players struggle in other systems and then come into a system where there's limited space and you've got a good coach who narrows the margins within which you play. So what's also interesting is, despite all the shots they gave up last night, this will get forgotten. United looked like they'd won. After McTominay came on for Casemiro, McTominay actually, for a period, he played really deep and he actually did a good little breaking job for United and Chelsea looked like they'd run out of ideas. In the, the first sort of six minutes or so of added time, United were taking the piss out of them. Yeah. They were in complete control. They were managing the game really well and you just thought they'd win. And that narrative then, what we talk about now, if that madness at the end doesn't happen, you'd go, they managed that situation really well. They've come back from 2-0 down and won 3-2 at Stamford Bridge. Credit. Yeah. If but just they had didn't. a mad ending. And, but I think it's a, it's not a one-off though, is it? Like, Of course it's not. That's the thing. It's but like, the, there is yeah. a fine line with the narratives and particularly of around United. That you and I are having a, if they've gone back and they've won 3-2, you and I ain't going, ah, oh, shit, they can see the 29 shots on goal again or whatever it was. We go, I've, they've come back from 2-0 down. The mentality is good. Rah, I rah, still rah. think I'd be mentioning the shots thing though because it's a repetitive yeah, theme true. with them. Certainly in terms of Mo Salah for the weekend and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that completely. Uh, yeah, I mean, they'll be bashing their head a- against the brick wall. Um, from the fantasy perspective, obviously cut the goals for Garnacho. I know it did really well for you, Clayton. I mean, he, he auto-subbed for a few people this week. He didn't auto-sub for you, in fairness. Um, and it would have been perfectly reasonable for those who did bench him this week. I completely get that. Um, he, but he's a United player of choice. Yeah. If you so. land at 35 and they're like, ah, oh, but I can play for Fernandez or I can pay for Rashford. Like, if you want to go differential and make that choice, do it. Don't make that choice because of money, though. Yeah. Because Garnacho's the better choice. Rashford, I think, was rested. 
and I think we'll come back in against Liverpool at the weekend. Um, Anthony's assist, by the way, for Mate, Garnacho's second goal is... That's outrageous. It, Look, what it is, yeah. I've been harsh on him before, but to generate that, because it's almost like he didn't have enough of a backlift either, to generate that power, accuracy and curve from like his running stance, uh, my jaw dropped. I was like, oh my God. It's also his first assist of the season, so... <laughs> What an assist it was. Just, to be just fair about to well that he made it a good one. Yeah. <laughs> worth the wait. I wonder if United fans think that it was worth the wait. Um, Garnacha is obviously going to be looked at for for fantasy. And, I, you know, if people got a problem in that area, I don't hate buying it this week. You know he's going to play. I'm sure United will have chances themselves against Liverpool. United have performed very well in their two home games against Liverpool over the last couple of years. Um, defensively, it's a mess at the moment, and it's not helped by the fact Martinez is going to be out for the rest of this month, and so yeah, too is Victor Lindelof. He swapped Dallo and Wambisaka. So Dallo played left back. You obviously see him. The, the one benefit on that side is the cross for Bruno Fernandez is goal. Um, I think Dallo is of real interest after Liverpool for the run in that I wouldn't have concern about his minutes. Wambisaka, I would. Luke Shaw, we think, will be back around about game week 37, which is also worth bearing in mind. Martinez and Lindelof will both return before that, but that's a whole. Also, Varane went off again yeah, last night. Johnny Evans also went off last night. Camboala looks a decent talent, but I would suggest him alongside Maguire on Sunday probably tips the balance of me thinking... This is the danger game for Liverpool from thinking, well, if that's what United have got at the back, I don't see Liverpool not scoring enough goals to go and win the game. Yeah, it's probably agreed. my take now. Liverpool just need to be sensible off the ball and mm -hmm. they should now go there and win if that's if that's United's backline situation. Um, for Chelsea, I mean, Cole Palmer, the, the numbers are absurd. It's a joke. <laughs> He's in contention for the golden boot, mate. Yeah, I know. And even what you said earlier, he's probably in contention for player of the season, to be honest. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think you know, people get, oh, well, you've got to pick a player from the team that wins the league. Is Chelsea's individual player by miles? No. By miles. Oh, let me pick a City player for player of the year. Who do you pick? Probably Rodri. Right. Who do you pick for Arsenal? I'd say Rice, Odegaard. Who do you pick for Liverpool? I don't know. That's a tough one with Liverpool. Right. Yeah, but like with Chelsea, in terms of an individual yeah. award, I'm I'm tired of this. Our oh, individual players have got to win team trophies. Oh, the Ballon d'Or winner's got to win the Champions League and the World Cup and shit like that. You're the best player in the world over 12 months. Give them the award. And Cole Palmer has been as good as any player in the league over the last same. I would have no problem if he won. But really, I'm not here. quite there. I get where you're coming from, but I don't think it's quite there. Yeah, I'd go for Rodri if they win the league. <laughs> Um, for Chelsea, um, I mean, obviously, good good luck to anyone who's not got. I mean, I'm surely you fix that now. Sheffield United, how are you going to look at that if you've not got? Yeah, uh, his price what's... is his price is not a reason not to fix it. No. Is there? I don't know what really. his EO is. To be fair, I don't know how highly owned he is. At the moment. Yeah, I, I think him and Holland will probably both be over hundred this week. I think. Yeah, but I think with what he's done. It's kind of read the room a little bit. If you're worried about it, Palmer's going to be the bigger worry. There'll be a surge for him. Yeah. And we should also note cautious. How many times are we captain players against Sheffield United and it's let us down this season? This is true, right? Yeah. Salah home and away against them. Ollie Watkins, home to Sheffield United. Huming sure. Sun, home to Sheffield United. Bakaya Saka, 5-0 yeah. against Sheffield United. Only a pony assist. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Palmer, I think for me. <laughs> that was always good to see learning from our mistakes. If anything, I'm more I'm more put off by the fact he scored five in the last two. Why? Because you just think that can't keep up. Well, yeah. At the end of the day, he's still it's two he's two penalties, and it's a deflected uh, shot. I was just going to say the same. But thing, also yeah. at the same time, you alluded to it earlier. What was it? Eight shots eight and chances, nine chances created or something. Eight chances created. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. again. It probably speaks volumes about Manchester United because he won't have those numbers at Sheffield United. No. But also, let's also factor in what Sheffield United have done in some of their home games, right? 
Five nil Brighton, five nil Villa, six nil Arsenal. Even the three three with Fulham, they've still conceded three in the second half in that game. Yeah, he's not been week. Of course. So the away games at Sheffield United have proved generally fine for people. So yeah, I think it's it's Cole Palmer captain. In terms of me. the general game, like that, you wouldn't think there was like two hundred million pounds worth and more of midfielders with the lack of control in this game. It's absolutely bonkers. When Casado made the mistake for the goal, I thought, calm down, mate. Yeah. Like, it's a bad error. Yeah. But he looked like he'd, he really had just realised he'd left the oven on and, and actually someone had already told the him that the house burning. had burnt down. Yeah. You're still winning, mate. All right, it's bad. Yeah, it's, but it's not the end of the it. world. Yeah. He looked so distraught. His head went after that, I think. And I thought, yeah, calm down a little bit. And then obviously United score again quite quickly afterwards. Obviously, I was watching Mo Salah walk off the pitch at this point. Um, and you think that they've they've blown it. And when I, I, I can only imagine what Chelsea fans were thinking when Garnacho Show put United 3 2 up, must be a bit how? Yeah. How? How have you got themselves in that position? And you could look at it a different way and say, Anana should save Gallagher's goal. It's a penalty for 2 0. Should United have been 2 0 down in the first place? questionable but you can't look at them numbers of efforts and stuff and, and that Chelsea have had and not think they deserve to have to come back basically really other than like I said United were managing injury time really well it will get forgotten yeah and then even from after the equaliser they have madness didn't they where they overcommit going forward it was like the West Ham Tottenham ending wasn't it in fact yeah. a lot of the game was, was just more like the end of that West Ham Tottenham game and then to not pick him up from the corner and stuff Anana by the way people will pick up again the Gallagher goal his problem is shots that are close to him. Yeah, it's like he doesn't... He's not able to actually react quick enough to ones that are too close. Yeah, that's that's the problem for him. If you look at his mistakes, you'll see the majority of them are shots that are near to him rather than one in the corner that he should save. The ones that are too close to him, he's struggling. I wonder if you should consider kicking. This might sound weird. I'm a goalkeeper expert, correct me on that. But I don't know if in circumstances like that, because he's so good with his feet as well, if you should just react with his feet. That's a really good point I hadn't thought of now. I'm thinking reactions and Onana. Even there's a couple of times you see something deflected and he seems really slow to actually react to like the change in direction of a... Things take deflections is fair enough. Yeah, no, but it's just more putting that with what you've just said about things being close to him. Maybe it is just a reactions thing with him. Yeah, despite all that, I already said, you know, and even though United's defensive, I'm looking at goalkeepers potentially for two games and I'm hardly un highly unlikely to make a move. But I've even said to you, I still consider him. Yeah. Still consider him because they'll probably concede every game, but in the double, he still gets seven, eight, maybe even if they concede a couple. So, Anana's of real interest for me for the end. I think Dallow would be the other defensive one I'd have my eyes on rather than looking at the likes of Maguire because I think that situation could change. Garnacho, don't see how I don't go there. And I may well look at punting Rashford at the end, but I think it's more likely I go Hoyland. Okay. I think Wildcard is in 35, and this is probably a note for people who are not. If fitness wise is going to be Hoyland, Isak, and Holland, yeah, that's the three that kind most people itself, wild card it? in thirty five are going to go for. I think, yeah, yeah, fair play, yeah. Is that a wrap? I think so, just about roughly, yeah. Well, um, I'll have a look at Twitter because you put a tweet out asking for questions, and if you could tell the listeners what they've got for the rest of the day, uh, the rest of the up. day, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got you got um, stuff coming. Patrons differential show late afternoon and advanced tier patrons um team news streams eight o'clock tonight as well. It was a deadline stream for everybody on YouTube, 10 a.m. tomorrow as well. Happy if you days, want to support uh, the show, www.patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. Go on, Clay. Lovely stuff. Yeah, just looking for the questions. We've covered a lot of them, a lot of questions about people's chip strategies, what to do with captaincy on the weekend so we'll go with fpl underscore tractor with a non-fpl question to end the show and i know you love this sport the cricket season starts today so oh, it sure. seems fitting to ask do you like playing football in the rain and watching football when it's raining i love playing football in the rain it's one yeah. of my favorite things i love a slide tap in the rain yeah yeah used to yeah as long as it wasn't like monsoon like yeah you'd prefer it when it rained i think a hundred percent yeah and the uh, another but one. I prefer watching I... games in the rain as well. Oh no, I don't. I, I'm. I did not like getting soaked when I'm physically in the stadium. The I weather. The weather definitely helped that game at Chelsea a little bit last night. But that said, it didn't help the game at West Ham on Tuesday. So, yeah, 
All right. And then final one, which I think you will like. Uh, James Nelson, UK. With it being WrestleMania this weekend, which present Premier League player would make the best wrestler? Is Holland too obvious? Which <laughs> Premier League player would make the best wrestler? My instinct was Holland before I even saw that as well. That feels like a bit of a cop out, though. I don't know. What about someone like Gabrielle? I think would be quite good, actually. That's a good shout. He's quite aggressive, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. He's quite hands on. Like, he liked that battle with Holland on Sunday. Yeah. He, um, he had a good one with Morris on Wednesday as well, to be fair. Yeah, uh, Gabrielle's a good shout. Yeah. Or uh, to be Romero. honest, the, these days you, you get more a, a little bit more about the athletic stuff, aren't they? Rather than just all the biggest guy. So Romero get disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine just far as fighting people everywhere. Yeah, no, you can't you can't get Romero get done for like eye, eye gouges and stuff <laughs> like that, I should imagine. Now someone athletic who does celebrations that are like backflips and stuff these no days. No one really does that anymore, do they? No. Well, I think too many people have had knee injuries and stuff that like maybe pack that in um you're going for like the Rey Mysterio vibes aren't you yeah I'm, I'm trying to think it would be really athletic like that Julian um, Alvarez could you're he right do that? no one really does mad celebrations anymore do they I'm stealing your answer I, 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 I like Gabriel I think that's a good shout okay um by the way they should keep the title on Roman Reigns this weekend I know people don't like that but that's my opinion they should what? Uh, they should keep the title on Roman Reigns okay Happy days. I don't watch wrestling, so no idea. But a lot of our listeners will too. Okay. And they won't like that opinion. And I don't care. Okay. Well, at James at Plenty of FPL Pod. Uh, <laughs> I think I think that's a wrap. Thank you, Hammers. That was all good. All right. Cheers. Let's get it swiftly ended then, because uh I know there's obviously a deadline coming up for people. Uh enjoy everyone. Have a great weekend. Hope your arrows are great and be nice to each other. Cue music, please. Bad child. 